I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with that super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. Big day back in studio, big man. How you feel? I'm back. I'm feeling good. How's your vacation? It was great. It was uh it's always fun to see more than just flatland and you know the mountains in Tennessee and stuff. Yeah, you had a good time. How's the weather? You got good weather there? It was good. It was uh it was actually interesting. It rained and it was foggy a lot, right? But with the mountains, it actually wasn't awful. It was. It felt like picture paintings that you got to see all the time. So we got to appreciate, oh. you know, the different weather and how it is different places. Very cool. Very very cool. So this week, our topic is despair and grief energies. And today's meeting of the minds, we're going to discuss the holiday program and the pause plan principle. So you get a chance to listen to yesterday's episode on why I picked this topic for this week because. I know when you saw the topic go out, you're like, Bill, it's Christmas week. You're picking grief. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, it was, so. it was, it was, I was excited when you said, I'm going to tie in this entire week and bring it all together. I was like, oh, it's just going to get better and better as we keep going. So I hope I can do that today because I want to talk about the holiday program and how it can tie into grief. If we look at grief, grief is a natural response to loss. Grief is also a response when we have an expectation that is not met. We discussed in yesterday's um, health huddles on how our holiday programs can create a perception and how it creates this expectation of a holiday, how, how holidays should be and holidays should not be. And this is a powerful program setting our expectations of how others should act how we should act, how everything should play out. And the the second, the millisecond, someone or something fails to meet this perception, your expectations of should will be activated. And these get activated in those red zone energies in the state of restriction in event, judgment, and reaction. Do you have any questions on that? Did you understand it well? Do you have any feedback? Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you. And I think um, for me, watching holiday movies and like Hallmark stuff is actually funny to watch. Um, just to watch how it plays out, you know, how unrealistic a lot of it is. And to watch how many people try to actually achieve that, you know, that added stress to be a, a Hallmark movie holiday. And it's not a joke. It really is. You know, if we look at the state of judgment, when the ego takes conscious mind control, right? This is when the ego has conscious mind control and is controlling the cage mind. And in this state, this drives your behavior with a barrage of unexpected emotions, especially when the holiday program is activated. You could actually be in shock. And this would be coming from fear that someone could do this or do that, especially during the holidays. Or you could be moved into anger and you feel strong emotions to defend and attack, to set the situation or the person straight. Or you could even be in disbelief, sadness. This is grief that you acted in such a rage or that things aren't going the way you expect them to go. And this will land you in a guilt, which magnifies the grief energy as the ego locks in the regret program. And it's so important because I'll tell each of you listening, you will not stop the holiday program activation, but you can get out of the activation. In fact, I will say you either stay in the activation in grief, the suffering, and this can lead you to get stuck in that state of grief. And this is when we experience despair and hopeless, or you can listen to what we're going to talk about today and get yourself out of that because this despair and grief happens more than people think. Because the holiday program is infused with stories 
of the perfect family interactions. And when any of this blows up, many people become hopeless and despair about their family relationships. And so what people don't realize is that this can have lasting effects for weeks, for months, for even years of resentment and regret. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? You you kind of touched on it a moment ago. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's it's interesting because some people are like, well, I love the holidays. I don't get, you know, activated during it. And a lot of people don't realize that the over-purchasing of, you know, presents or over during the holiday um, thing or stressing about getting everyone together, things like that's an activation. We mask it as a I enjoy the holidays kind of thing. But it does activate you. It's still stress at the end of the day and the reason why you do something. And that was something where I kind of transitioned from, you know, really enjoying the holidays to kind of noticing that and kind of just, you know, pulling away from it. But it is interesting to watch how people react different to that activation. And so when we talk on this, David, we have to ask the question, how does the ego use the holiday program? Because you can understand that because the ego uses the holiday program to trip us into the red zone in a cage mind, thus disconnecting us from our heart, from our love, and from the creation mind. And we're going to touch on a little bit of what you said because the ego does this by using all four wants in attachment to the holiday program. So the wants are the ego's base energy. And very powerful as these wants is what sets your identity of self-worth, self-esteem, and self-image. So we look at each one of these, the want of control. This is the super strong embedded deep in the holiday program want. And this was set as a young child. The holidays as a child sets our holiday programs. This sets our perception. This sets our expectations. And this drives our behavior through the holidays. So let me give you a behavior that is attached to the want of control that may not seem quite as clear as a defend and attack when you attempt to control. So this behavior is creating declarations. When you create a declaration, this creates a projection of something you are going to do or change in the future. And there's a very strong holiday program that goes through all five life categories and it affects you dramatically going into the new year. So a strong holiday program is to procrastinate on dealing with conflict during the holidays, mm-hmm. right? And so you let's say you have a conflict and let's say this may affect your career, something that must be addressed, must get done, but you are putting it off with the excuse, it's the holidays. I'll do it after the holidays. Now, This conflict that you are not addressing is not going away, even though you're burying it with the excuse, it's the holidays. You are going to go into the new year thinking, oh my gosh, it's a new year. And you are going to run into a wall called the conflict of the things you procrastinated on during the holidays. Mm -hmm. You understand that, right? Happens all the time at work and career and you get overwhelmed and stressed out and all the goals or the changes you were going to make in January aren't happening Mm -hmm. because you can't catch up. And that sets your year. You see, that all stemmed from the holiday program of, it's the holidays. I'll take care of it later. You know, nobody's going to expect anything from me. We don't pick the holidays off as you can see, right? Obviously we're not working Christmas, but you know what I mean? But maybe we are, I don't know. We have before. It's, it doesn't <laughs> make sense. We have a lot of work to do. And for us to go in a new year, that's why I have everybody set their goals. We just finished the goal setting class in the stress mastery community um, yesterday. And it's so important because if you haven't got your goal set and you're not ready to go, 
and you're going to wait till after the holidays, how are you going to do that? But let's say we talked about career and you brought this up. Let's say the conflict is in your finances. The holiday program you may carry is you must get great presents so everyone is happy. This ties to other wants, which I'll discuss in a moment, but you declare, you project, I'll just put everything on credit and figure it out after the holidays. And you put yourself in debt, a debt that many people don't get out of, sometimes never. And sometimes it takes a year for their holiday program to activate and do it all over again. They never get ahead. And you had talked on that. Do you address that a little bit more? Or? Yeah, I think um, people people get lost with um, doing too much to please the expectation instead of themselves. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things that you're starting to see because especially I, I talk about social media all the time. You want to post all the gifts you got and how happy the reactions people are. People are giving gifts for a reaction and expectation of someone, not because they want to. You know, and then if you're recording and they don't give you the reaction you wanted, now it's no longer you're you're not happy you gave the gift. You see, it's all Absolutely. all about the expectation and overdoing instead of doing what you feel. And you, and you're making like this projection. Oh, I'll take care of it mm-hmm. later. Don't worry. You know. Now, a big area of declaration, which we know, declaration and projections are health. You know, we'll start in a new year and we justify with the holiday program activated. Oh, I need a break or there's too many parties or I'll just eat whatever I want now. And in January, I'm serious. This year, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We know that in the health category a lot, right? And we also know that it takes people at least four to six weeks to even start their New Year's resolutions on an average, if they start at all. That's a fact. We know that from the years of being in the business. Now, another area of declaration and projection, and this one you might not be as clear, but it's dealing with one or more people in our relationship category. So let's say you have a conflict with somebody in your family, even it could be your significant other. And your idea is, you know, I have this issue, I have this conflict, but I'll deal with it after the holidays. Now, The ego is going to take that conflict. And remember, when a conflict is not put into a resolution, it is activated into the resentment program. So all through the holidays, while you think, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk about this or deal with this during the holidays. I'll just bury it. The ego takes that conflict and builds on its resentment program. Because you fail to execute conflict resolution, you actually go through the holidays pissed off. Even if it's a low-level anger, right? You become passive-aggressive, angry, and you're in grief. And what happens is you are building resentment towards this person that's going to explode by the time you deal with it. And we see this happen. And usually, here's the challenge, it'll explode during the holidays. So if you are thinking, well, I'm going to wait till after I'm done with this party or after I'm done with Christmas or after I'm done with the Hanukkah celebrations, then I'm going to deal with. No, you deal with the conflict resolution. Now you talk it out. You deal so you can enjoy the holidays. I'm telling you, there's no other way around it because the ego will take that and run with it. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts. Yeah, it's simple. What you don't repair, you repeat. It's literally as simple as that. And when you bury it and say after the holidays, the family members leave. You don't see them until the next holiday groupings that come around and everything explodes within you that you've been holding for an entire year now and your family members. I'm telling you, so it's a powerful thing. I'm a big believer. If I have a conflict, deal with it. I just don't see it. It doesn't make sense to me. And then finally, the huge declaration takes place in the personal development arena and that Holiday program tells you, put off your practices until after the holidays. Take a break. Sleep in. Do this. Don't do your green focus power hour. Ah, Forget about working out. And what happens is we cannot stop conflict and stress. So when you don't practice you, your practices of stress mastery, you go through the holidays in a state of restriction in 
the base of fear and stress and resentment and your behavior is steeped in anger and you feel regret and grief. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is do your green focus power hour. And all of this is actually the one of control. All declarations are avoidance, fear, and lies. And they're going to land you into grief energy. Every one of them. Do you have any thoughts? Any more thoughts on that? Or are you is it clear? No, I, I got to experience it on this Tennessee trip. You know, I've, I've created a lot of new habits and I stuck with it the entire time. And usually coming back from a trip or, you know, holidays, things like that, I would feel some type of guilt for breaking my diet or not following sure. my personal development or seeing those gaps in my journal, you know, because I have them numbered and it, it messes with me with when I came back because this was our Christmas friend trip. I felt great. I was able to have an, a great trip, but I did not miss a beat. And it, it's like, I can't tell you how the momentum felt coming back. Yeah, because now you're in momentum. Now, so the one of control is really the sticky want, but let's now look at number two, one of approval. This is the need to be seen. It plays out through the holiday program very strong. Maybe as a child, you were the center of attention, or maybe you felt invisible. Either way, the ego will create chaos so you get seen. If you don't get seen, you will be disappointed in grief. That is the how the ego uses the want of approval. Now, how does the ego use the want to belong? Number three, the holiday program drives many, many to go to church during the holidays, right? They want to belong, got to go to church, it's Christmas, or to create some type of odd behavior so they have this need to be part of the tribe. And these behaviors is what leads to some stupid action they did. Maybe they're over drinking, over partying. Maybe they say things. I remember Bobby with the fireworks. You remember? <laughs> these stupid, dumbass things that you do because you want to be part of the tribe. You want to to belong, and this is going to cause grief. Yeah. And then there's the want of security, number four. The ego's comfort zone. And this is activated all around the holiday program. This is the want that does not want you to deviate from your programs of the holiday, your shoulds of the holidays, or if you do, you will be sad and grief. So can you see how the how the ego uses this these wants? And the holiday program gets activated during the holidays, people. It's a program that was set when you were a small child. Mm -hmm. So dealing with the activation of the grief energies, that's what we're talking about this week. And the first thing in dealing with these grief energies in the holiday program is the awareness that these will get activated. Did I word that properly for everybody to understand? Yeah. You are not going to stop the activation. <laughs> they will get activated. And if you are not aware of the grief energies, such as feeling disappointed, the moment you feel disappointed, you need to slow down. I'll talk about it in a second, how you deal with it. The moment, how about feeling unwanted? <laughs> Nobody's paying attention to me. How about feeling helpless? There's too much to do. I can't. These are all grief. How about feeling misunderstood? Oh, they just don't understand me. How about feeling rejected? It's like they didn't listen to my story or they're not listening to me or just feeling sad. You see, if you're not aware, the ego will take over and you will be in the story perception, the illusion of grief. And the ego will bring in other egos to justify why you have the right to be sad. And this will affect your holidays and the weeks to follow. That's what I want everybody to understand. I want you to have the most wonderful holidays this year. But you got to understand, if you're going to go into the new year and really go in with some momentum, you must control now. It can't start in two weeks. Your thoughts? Yeah, you said it. I think that's a, a big thing. A lot of people reflect after the holidays and it kind of really slows you down. And Christmas is a big one because the few weeks after is supposed to be your starting point. So when you get knocked down a week before 
and it follows you a few weeks after yep. you're behind the eight ball before it even starts. And many people never catch mm-hmm. up. I'm telling you, we see it all the time. That's what caused this. How do you know if you haven't catch up, David? You're stressed yeah. out. That's how you know you haven't caught up. You're stressed out. You're overwhelmed. Life is too much. And a lot of people get sick after the holidays. Mm-hmm. Or right now, a lot of people, <laughs> they get run down. Sure. So once you can understand and become aware of why these holiday programs bring grief and aware and how these programs bring grief, you can then consciously take control and move out of grief. And this is a truth. You cannot be in grief or despair. Because to be in grief or despair, there must be a story telling you that you are in grief and despair. And the ego is the storyteller of the past tales of grief and the future worries about grief. You do not live in the past. You do not live in the future. You live in the now. So let's take a look at how does this all work. It's actually quite simple to break the holiday program to get out of these energies, you simply must pause. So L.R. Nost is an award-winning author that specializes in writing what are called gentle parenting books. Every parent should look up L.R. Nost, K-N-O-S-T. And she's also the founder and director of Children's Right Advocacy and Family Consulting Group. I love this quote. From her, from time to time, we all need to take pause, a brief stillness, a moment to review our initial reaction so we can move to the place where a calm, thoughtful response is born, L.R. Nost. I thought that was one of the most powerful things I had ever heard. Mm -hmm. That is stress mastery. We've all experienced the activation of the holiday program when we have gone into reaction. And through hindsight, we have all realized how much stress and anxiety we could have prevented by simply pausing and reconsidering our choices before taking actions. But unfortunately, this is not how the human being operates. The hierarchy of the brain will indicate event, judgment, and reaction first when anything goes against our programming held in mind. The human being is hardwired for behavior. Our programs color our view of how we see the world. And in truth, you are never really truly seeing the world unless you can pause. So my holiday programs for decades were very, very dark. While other kids had wonderful Christmas experiences, mine were steeped in drama and abuse. My stepfather would become extra violent during the holidays, which meant more drinking, more partying, more violence. In fact, one year he came home, threw all the presents that were under the tree out in the yard in a pile and threatened to burn them because he said, we're not appreciative. Now we're Three, four, five, six years old. <laughs> Just want you to realize. Now, the other, another year, because I remember this one really quite well, he had bought his nephew. I remember his nephew, his name Bobby. His actually <laughs> was named Bobby. Um, and he bought him a BB gun. Came home loaded. Billy, Billy, get your ass out here. Get your ass out here. That was always the thing, right? Oh, crap. Here we go. You know, I, I think I was six or just maybe turning turn seven. I think I was six years old. And he came home drunk, opened the present, and proceeded to shoot the ornaments off the tree. <laughs> One shot after another. Boom, boom, boom. So at age seven, when I was taken in by my grandparents, and they loved to celebrate Christmas, and this is a whole different environment. They loved the whole church, the celebration with the church, the presents, all the aunts and all the uncles would come over, and I would always create some type of scene. See, my behavior became to withdraw around family holidays, and it's pretty much as my mode of operation for decades. 
And then I married Linda. No one does Christmas and the holidays like Linda. No one. I have had to process a lot of my holiday program, which is steeped in drama, but I have learned to slow down. I have learned to pause, plan, let go, because that program still gets strongly activated. But each year it's less and less. So do you have a holiday program that you notice that gets activated when ever the families all come together? You guys have a different upbringing, but do you have that? Um, yeah, and I would say it's kind of more recent than than anything. Um, after my grandfather passed, a lot of things felt very different. And instead of enjoying the holidays, I felt like I had to kind of toughen up. I noticed myself kind of closing down and things like that. Can you explain to everybody why? If you know why that's the case. Yeah, my, my grandfather was kind of like the catalyst for Christmas. We always went to his house. He was, mm-hmm. I mean, 80s when he passed away and still had a house full of lights. And he passed at Christmas. Yes. So it was the, his, that's his a, birthday yeah. right before Christmas, a few days before, literally the same week coming up, and then right after. So it was interesting because it had everybody together. You watch everybody deal with the situation in person, not over the phone, not over this. And to watch everybody do it differently. For me, I had a, like I always say, a weird kind of, you know, relationship with like death. And I thought, I always said, my grandpa went out like a gangster. He did what he did until the day he died. He enjoyed it. You know, he sure did. I wasn't very sad. And for me, I felt like I'd be strong for everyone. And the years coming, it felt weird. It wasn't, he wasn't here. We did at a different right. house, things like that. So for me, I, I noticed myself kind of closing in, preparing myself for all this, you know, different or being that shoulder. And like so that. you actually developed a new program, which is very um, common because of the loss of somebody you love, right? It's a loss. It, and loss creates grief. And it's interesting That's bereavement. it wasn't because of him. You know, I celebrate, you know, him passing and Christmas for him. But it's the other people. It's everybody else. And it's a very sure. odd feeling because I enjoy Christmas still. You still see me disappear in the holidays a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Not as bad. I'm getting better. <laughs> you know, but you know what? It's nobody does holidays like your mother. She is unbelievable. And that was, I thought, something really cool that even though when he passed, that part didn't leave because that was first year her. it did. Program first year it did. No, no, well, that's what I mean. When she finally processed yeah. it and went through, yeah, she it took her a couple of years to get back. Is to be yes, grandpa. it's the house, the lights, the yes. everything. Yep, nothing skipped the beat yep. once it came back. Yes, and and I think it's important to process your holiday program if your holiday program causes you any grief, regret, anger, or resentment, and. If it doesn't, you got a great holiday program. Let's celebrate, people. Yeah. Celebrate your butt off. But if you find yourself falling in these energies where you feel regret, resentment, you go into grief, feel angry, feel frustrated, you have to process this. And this begins with practicing pause. See, when we pause, slow down, we take control of the cage mind. This allows us to feel our heart and the connection of the creation mind. The cage mind's the head, and it's the ego. The creation mind's the heart. This pause is done by slowing down and breathing. A single conscious breath shuts down the red zone sympathetic nervous system, which is what activates the stress response, and it turns on the parasympathetic nervous system, green zone, which activates what is called the pause plan response. In the pause plan response, our state In our identity base is an event, awareness, response. And the pause plan response, one, slows breath, calms the body, which gives us control of the mind. Two, creates a calm vibration, which not only affects us, but affects everyone around us. Here, you're not feeding other egos. Three, the pause plan response creates space for conflict resolution and response. And you can respond from the green zone. Sometimes the response is strong where you are responding from the green zone with no attachment. Sometimes you have to remove yourself from the situation and contemplate a response. And sometimes you'll see it and just let go. You can't control it. All of these release the conflict. And number four, 
The pause plan response creates heart connection where you can have compassion. Here you can forgive and move into gratitude and be thankful. And five, the pause plan response creates connection to the superconscious mind. Here we create and find solutions and we can experience higher connection. So I have six steps to put us in this pause plan principle and to put us into pause and action. Six steps, six easy steps. One, become aware of how you feel, aware of the emotion. You have to slow down and you have to see it. That's why this show is so important. You really got to, you got to just pause for a second. If you're overwhelmed, pause. If you're anxious, pause. If you're stressed out, pause. If you feel resentful and anger, pause. If you're sad, pause. Number two, Put your focus on the heart and actually take a breath into the heart and keep your attention in the heart. Number three, look at the activated emotion. Look at it. If it's grief, look at the story the ego is playing. Do it like you're watching a movie. And it's okay to acknowledge the ego's upset. Talk to your ego. Hey, Barry, I see you're upset. And pause, shut up and watch and pause from the heart and stay disengaged from the emotion and be this objective watcher. Number four, here's where you use the let go technique. You guys all know the let go technique by now because this is allow the process and release the activated energy of the program. This is how we get rid of the holiday programs and journaling can help with this. But the main thing is you've got to allow the process. Number five, now move into gratitude. And what you want to focus on here is letting go of judgment. Judgment against others, judgment against situation, and judgment against yourself. Move into compassion. Move into it. You do not have to condone past incidents of abuse. You do not have to condone abuse or what upsets you. You're letting it go for you. That's what you're doing. And you may have to first move into forgiveness before you go into compassion. And if you have to, forgive. Then become compassionate. Then move into gratitude. And then the last point of this is, number six, ask for guidance. Literally ask. What is my perfect plan for this? How should I respond to this? Ask for help. How do I deal with this family member? How do I deal with this situation? What is the highest way I can deal with this? And then pause and listen. Pause and listen. Pause and listen for that still small voice. It will come. This is pause and plan. Mm-hmm. David, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think um, you you've touched it on a, a on a kind of a place that a lot of people don't think about when they they talk about the holidays, and especially when it comes to pausing and kind of slowing down. People feel like they can't slow down at all during this time, and they look at pausing and kind of taking a moment as a weakness for some reason. And when in reality, it's going to Create better experiences overall. And it's funny. And her story's telling them to take a break, but they won't pause. You're absolutely right. They're crazy. But yet the program, the holiday program says, oh, don't do this because you get a break. This is your time to take a break. But you're not taking a break. It's all a bunch of crap. You're running around the stores. You're running around the house. You're ready. Don't worry, worry, worry. You got to do this. Got to do this. Is that taking a break, yeah. people? Seriously. If you slow down and see the behavior, you will be shocked. Mm-hmm. I believe you'll be shocked. and But that shock is when you'll know that you can release it and let it go. Because if you can't see it, you can't feel it. I'm talking about you seeing it and you feeling mm-hmm. it. That means you see that ego talking and you feel that activation of the heart. Well, If you can't see it, you can never let it go because it's driving your behavior. It's controlling you. And trust me, you're not enjoying the holidays. My goal is for everybody to have the 
best holiday they've ever had. That's it for today's show. Our, what's our mission? Our mission here is the greatest ship to the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. I know what our mission is. Don't worry. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.